Hey there, this is Seth from the RE Tipster blog and welcome to part two of how to create your own real estate website within WordPress. And when it comes to real estate websites, there's actually several different purposes you can design them for. For example, you could design it to list properties for the purpose of selling real estate. You could design it for the purpose of collecting email addresses and contact information to add to your buyers list. Or you could do what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video, which is building a buying website. And a buying website is a pretty simple thing. It's just a very basic website with usually a few different pages on it. And one of those pages includes a submission form where people can get on your website and submit their property information to you so that you can then turn around and make them an offer to buy their property if you want to. That's surprisingly probably the most important website that I have in my real estate business because this website really helps me to build credibility and just look like a real company that knows what it's doing. And then most importantly, it's very functional in terms of getting a lot of this information from potential sellers and saving me a ton of time. And luckily it's not terribly difficult to put one of these websites together as I'll show you right here in this video. I will say if you're looking to build a selling website, there's another video that's kind of similar to what we're gonna be going through here from a site called WP Beginner. And I'm gonna link to their video in case you wanted to create a selling website, that particular video will walk you through that process if that's the direction you want to go. But if you're just getting started and you have no other websites active for you, I personally think a buying website is one of the more important things you can do just in terms of giving you some kind of online presence and being probably one of the most functional websites you can have. So if we go ahead and just open up the site so we can see what it looks like as is, there's nothing really here other than a blank blog with nothing in it because we haven't done anything yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this website as it is and convert it to more of a properly laid out real estate buying website. And in order to do this, we need to get a theme and I'll be the first to tell you, there are a ton of themes you can get for WordPress websites that are free. And there's nothing wrong with that per se. However, I've found that with a lot of the free themes out there, they're very limited in what they can do. So I'll just show you for one example here. If we go here to appearance and click on themes, every WordPress website comes stocked with a handful of free themes that you can use. And basically what a theme does is it just kind of changes the look and feel and structure of your website. So right now the theme that is active on this website is is this one right here called 2017, as you can see right here. And if we wanted to, we could switch it to this one instead. Let's go ahead and activate this instead. And now if we go back here and refresh the site, now it looks totally different. And all the content is the same, it's just that the look and feel has changed because we switched themes. So as I said, there are a ton of free themes out there, but what I'm gonna show you right here is a paid WordPress theme called Agent Press Pro. And you can see it right here. And by the way, I have an affiliate link to this page you're seeing right here. And if you do end up buying it, I will get a small commission from that. And that's not why I recommend it. I recommend it because I've been using this theme for years and it's always served me very, very well. But just wanted to be upfront about that whole affiliate commission thing. This theme comes to us from a company called Studio Press, which actually has a lot of themes that are all very high quality. Like for example, this is another one that you may want to consider called the Agent Focused Pro theme. And it's pretty similar to Agent Press Pro. It just kind of has a slightly different look and feel to it. And for that matter, I've actually done a separate video and blog post covering 10 real estate WordPress themes that are all pretty solid. So I'll include a link to that as well in case you want to check out any of those. There's a lot of great options out there, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you the one that I have the most experience with, which is Agent Press Pro, which has been a pretty solid and reliable theme for me. And if we take a look at the live demo, we can kind of see what it looks like. And this is not what the theme is gonna look like immediately after you install it. This is what it can look like once you've done all the right customizations to it. And I'm not gonna cover all of that in this video, but I am gonna cover what is necessary to create a buying website. So if we go back here and if you wanna purchase this theme, all you gotta do is go ahead and click on buy theme and framework. And you go to a page that looks like this. You can just go through the usual motions, fill out all your information and buy it. And once you have bought it, you'll be taken to your own online account where you can see all of the themes you've ever bought. As you can see, I've bought like a few different themes from uh, Studio Press over the years, but the ones that you're gonna see after you buy Agent Press would be at least these two right here, possibly this one. And what you're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and download the Genesis framework and download Agent Press Pro. And once those are downloaded, we go back to our website here and we're going to click on Upload. 
And then once you get here, we're gonna go ahead and click on Upload Theme. And once you've downloaded both the Genesis Framework and Agent Press Pro, you're gonna get two zip files. And you can see them right here on my desktop that I just downloaded. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install Genesis. So we'll go ahead and drag this right into our browser window and click Install Now. Just wait a second for this to install. There we go, it's all set. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this. And then the next thing we're gonna go ahead and upload again and upload theme. And then we're going to drag Agent Press Pro into our browser screen. Once that's there, we will install now again. All right, so let's go ahead and activate this as well. So just to show you what happened, we've just installed the Genesis framework and then Agent Press. Genesis is kind of like the foundation and then Agent Press sort of sits on top of that and does even more customizations. And if we go ahead and just refresh this page, this is what our website looks like right now. So it's definitely different, but it's also definitely not exactly what we want yet. There's still a lot we have to do to customize this even further. So let's go ahead and go back here. And first of all, there is a few customizations we can make right off the bat, just to the look and feel of this. The color style is the first basic thing. As you can see, this is the default color right out of the box. If we wanted to change this a little bit, we could make it blue or gold or green. Since I'm a land investor, green sort of goes with the theme that I was using, so I'm just gonna pick that. And also the layout, you can have it set up so that the sidebar is right here on the right and then the main content is on the left. We could also do sort of the opposite thing where the sidebar is on the left and the content is on the right. That's what I'm gonna do for this example, but you can do whatever you wanna do. Once that's there, I'm gonna go down here and just save changes. And let's go ahead and refresh this and see what it looks like now. There we go. So you actually can't see the green yet, but you will in a second when we uh, get a little bit further along. Now, something else you should just be aware of is that Studio Press does a pretty good job of giving you some instructions to work with. So if you get back into your Studio Press dashboard, what you can do is you can go right to the theme you're using and click on this thing that says Setup Instructions. And this will give you a very in-depth, detailed set of instructions on how to set up your website based on whatever you're trying to use it for. I took quite a bit of time to go through this page by page and I actually learned a ton from doing it. So if you're really curious about all this theme can do or really any theme you buy from Studio Press, all of them come with these kinds of instructions. So those are definitely worth checking out if you want to. Something else you can do with WordPress is install plugins. This is kind of something that WordPress is known for. And when I first set up this website, there were a number of plugins that just sort of came automatically with it. If I was setting up a selling website, there would be a handful of additional plugins I would be downloading and installing and they're all free but since this is a buying website there's only one plugin that I'm really concerned about that's going to do a lot of heavy lifting for me and that plugin is called Gravity Forms and I'll include a link to this in case you want to use this plugin as well. Gravity Forms is a very solid robust plugin that can do a lot and is very flexible and fairly easy to use when you're trying to create any kind of submission form on your website. So whether you want a contact form or a more detailed submission submission form like I'm going to show you here. This is a pretty solid choice to go with. And to use Gravity Forms, it costs about 39 bucks a year. This is the plan that I use on my buying website. And if you're somebody who vehemently opposes anything that costs money, I totally get that. I actually used to be one of those people myself. So if you really don't want to do this, there are other form generator plugins out there as well. However, the ones that I've found are not nearly as user friendly and they're not quite as capable and flexible as Gravity Forms is. But there are other options out there. So just keep that mind you don't have to do this I just think it's a pretty solid option and makes things a lot easier so 39 bucks a year is not necessarily a fortune and I think it's totally worth it for what you get so what we can do is go ahead and click on this and I'm gonna check out with PayPal so I'll just click on that go ahead and log in go ahead and pay for this all right, so one thing you're gonna get here is this license key. So go ahead and copy that. And then you'll want to download this. And similar to those themes, you're gonna get a zip file. So once you got that zip file saved to your computer, you'll go back to your website here. And once you're in the plugins section right over there, we're going to click on add new, or there's also an add new button up here. And we'll click on upload plugin and then drag the Gravity Forms zip file right there. Click install now. All right, so the plugin is installed successfully. We'll go ahead and activate this. And then once 
once this is installed, we can see uh, this little thing over here. This is new that says forms. And what we'd have to do, which I'm not gonna do quite yet, but we'll get to this in just a minute. Let's go ahead and click on forms. First of all, enter in your license key that you got. There's mine, click next. And I'm going to keep background updates enabled. So that'll basically just update the plugin automatically whenever updates are needed. Click next and select a currency. I'm just gonna do US dollar because I'm in the US. Click next again, and then the installation is complete. So then you would click on create a form. I'm just gonna call this uh, sell your property. Go ahead and just create that. It doesn't need a description. And then this right here will kind of explain how this works. And I'm gonna show you how this works in just a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to make some other customizations to the site. The first thing I'm gonna do is go over here and click on pages. And currently the site just has this sample page, which you know isn't really much of anything. It's just kind of there. This is what our sample page looks like. And the way most buying websites that I've seen work have anywhere from three to five pages. And those pages pages usually are like a home page so it's like the page people first land on a sell your property page so it's, it's the page where the form you created is actually hosted then there's like an about page a contact us page and maybe even a testimonials page just to kind of help uh, build your credibility so i'm going to go ahead and create four pages for this example so we've got this sample page right here i'm just going to get in here and we're going to change the name of it i'm going to change this to home and i'll also change the url here just to say home and then once that's done we'll go ahead and click update and if we go ahead and preview the changes remember all i did was change the name of it so that's really the only thing that's different for most people on their home page they'll usually have like a few paragraphs explaining you know what the company is welcoming new users explaining what they can do to navigate through the site and get the most out of it they might even include like a video or something so all that stuff is fair game if you can include any pictures that doesn't hurt either i'll kind of leave it up to you on what you want your home page to say now we're going to go back here we're going to add a new page and this page we're just going to call sell your property and once we've got our form created we're going to add it right here and you can do that by simply clicking on add form and however many forms you've created with gravity forms you'll see them all on this drop down the only one that exists on my site right now is this one right here this is sell your property so i'm just going to go ahead and select that and then click insert form and then that little code right there is going to make our form appear and again you know i haven't actually put anything in this form yet so literally all it has is a title and a submission button but once I've got all the fields populated throughout this form they're all going to show here so that's how that works something else I'm going to do here just to simplify this page URL is just call it uh, sell so it's easy for people to get to that without having to type in dashes or anything something else I'll note here just for SEO purposes is that it always helps when you enter in all the relevant information in this section beneath here so for example you know sell your property I would go ahead and put that in here as the document title I might explain you know please please the submission form below to receive an offer from us if you've got any keywords you want to target like for example these would all be fair game if your website is a land buying website these are the kind of keywords that google would be able to pick up on when people are searching for these things so that's kind of how that works but anyway once you got that done all you have to do is go up here and click publish and then that will create this page on your website and then once that's done we're going to go back here to add new and I'm going to call this page FAQ for frequently asked questions. And this is where you can just sort of come up with all the potential questions that you think people are going to want to know about your company before they submit anything on your website. This can be a really good way just to preemptively answer a lot of people's questions so that if they do have some hesitancy about sending all their personal information to you, this can kind of help them get more comfortable with who you are and what you do. So we're going to have this page as well. We'll go ahead and publish that. Then we'll create another page and we're gonna call this one contact. And for this page, you would just put all the basic information that you would expect to see in a contact page, like maybe your business address, phone number, if you wanna put that out there, a contact form where people can contact you, all that basic stuff. And again, to create a contact form, you just have to go back to Gravity Forms and create one. And once it's there, you would add it the same way I just showed you a couple pages ago. There's also this plugin called WP Forms, which can do some basic forms as well. So if you're creating a different type of website that doesn't necessarily need a big, long, complex complex form but you do need just a basic contact form this could be another option worth trying and it's not going to cost any money so just keep that in mind if you're going in that direction but anyway once you've created all the content that you need for this page just go ahead and click publish again and now once we go back here and click on all pages we can see all of the pages that we have created to date and I'll show you why this is important in just a second when we start creating the menu 
So once this is all set, we're gonna go and click on Appearance and then click on Customize. And this is where the website starts to take shape a little bit more as we start making some of these tweaks. So first right here, Site Identity. This is where you can change the wording that goes here. So first off, we've got the title of our site and typically I would recommend just putting whatever the name of your company is here. So for example, if my company was just called ABC Company, let me just go ahead and type that in here. And then this is what it would look like. And the way this theme works, the tagline doesn't really show up anywhere, so it doesn't even matter what you have here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it just so it's clean. And if you want to, there is a way that you can change the little uh, image that shows up in people's browsers. Bluehost will put this little icon for all the websites that are created through their site by default. So if you're using Bluehost, that may be there. Or for example, the Genesis framework will put this little thing there. And that's, that's really fine. It doesn't matter that much. But say if you had your own company logo or some kind of brand identity that you wanted to show up there, you could upload that right here and then that would show. And then the image does need to be 512 pixels wide and tall, like a perfect square in order to show up right here. So just keep that in mind. I'm not gonna mess with that for now, but if you want to, that's where you can do it. If we go here, uh, the next part is the background image. And images I've always thought are pretty important for pretty much any kind of website. It really adds a lot of dimension to them. And especially if you're using a very high quality image, it can even sort of give you some subtle credibility as well. So one site that I have used liberally on all my websites is this one right here called unsplash.com. And I love this site because it has thousands of extremely high quality professional grade images and they're all free to use. You don't have to pay anything for them. You don't even have to give credit for them. You can literally just take them and use them for whatever you want. It's an amazing resource. And what I would do on this website is go up here to the search bar and type out a word to indicate whatever type of image I'm looking for. So for example, with a land buying website, probably want to get a picture of raw land, something that doesn't look too beautiful, but sort of conveys the idea of, you know, I own land, I don't want this land, I wanna get rid of it. So I'm not really going after like the high beauty factor, but uh, let's just type out the word landscape and see what that shows us. All right, so all we gotta do is just start scrolling through here. And if I'm looking for a picture that kind of looks maybe dreary or something like that, I've already seen a few of them as I was uh, scrolling through here. For example, like this one might work, uh, something like this might even work perhaps something like this. I think I'm gonna go with um, maybe this one right here. I kind of like that. So we'll go ahead and download this and then we'll go back to the site here. We'll go ahead and select the image and then drag it right there to upload it. And then one thing to note, uh, if we go back here, it says that the image used on the demo, so in other words, this is the image you see right on the background of this demo here, is 1600 pixels wide. So we can make sure that this image is the same uh, width by going over here and clicking on edit image. And we're gonna change this number right here to 1600. And then it's gonna scale automatically. And the reason we want this to be a similar size is because if it's too big, it could take your website a lot longer to load and just sort of give you a slower response time, which we obviously don't want. So go ahead and change it to match that. Then click update, and then we will go back here. And as you can see, the uh, dimensions have changed. We'll go ahead and choose that image. And there we go. Now that's the image we're seeing in the background. So we will go ahead and click back. Now for the header image, this is the image that would show up right here where it says ABC Company. You'll see there's kind of a rectangle right there. If you have a company logo, say if you hired somebody on Fiverr or 99designs to actually create a custom logo for you and they went through the trouble of making it these exact dimensions, you could take that image and then upload it here and then your company logo would show right here rather than just this basic text that's showing. Personally, I think this looks fine for most purposes, but if you did go through the motions of creating a special logo for the buying arm of your business, this is where you could upload it and have it be right there. I'm not gonna mess with that for this example, but that's where it is if you wanna do that. And then once we get done with that, you're gonna notice this next section here called menus. And there are actually a few different places that these menus can show up in the Agent Press Pro theme. However, in order to get the menu to show up in the right spot, we're not gonna do it through this section of the website. So just go ahead and leave these both blank and I will show you where we do this in just a second. The first thing we're gonna do is just get out of this all together. And then we're gonna go down here and click on Appearance and then Menus. And we're going to create our first menu here. So what we do is go here and we're just gonna call this Navigation Menu or whatever you wanna call it. And then click Create Menu. 
And then all we gotta do is click the pages that we want to show up in this menu and add it to menu. It's pretty easy and straightforward. And if you want to order them differently, you can do that here. So I want home to show up on the far left, followed by sell your property, move that there. And then uh, FAQ and then contact. You can also create sub menu items, which I'm not gonna do here, but if you wanted to like have a menu show up within a button on your menu, you could do that. But again, I'm not gonna mess with that. So once this is there, we're just gonna go ahead and click save menu. And then we're gonna go over here and click on widgets. And when you get to this page, you're gonna see all these different widget areas. And just to kind of illustrate what these all do, um, if you go back here to the demo, all these things you see throughout this demo are widget areas. So for example, this red thing right here, that is a widget area. This thing right here, that's a widget area. So is this, so is this, so is this right here. It's kind of hard to visualize until you start playing with it. But if we go back here, the thing I'm gonna show you, this right here, this menu, that is a widget area. And the name of this widget area is called header right. And if you wanna see an example of sub menu items, that's what these are. When you kind of hover over one button, these other items show up. If you did have sub menu items, that's how they would look on your website. But anyway, going back here, what we'd have to do is go here to this menu item called header right. And we're gonna take this right here and drag it right there. And once that's in there, we're going to select the navigation menu that we just created. And once that's there, we're gonna click save. And if we go back to our website and refresh it, we can see all the changes we've made so far. And this right here is the menu that we just put there. So that's how you go about creating your menu and making sure it shows up right there in that spot. If you wanted to have menus in other areas, you could go ahead and click on this. And for example, if we wanted that navigation menu to show up in the primary area, it would show up right there, which is a little weird. That's not really where I want my menu to show up. So I'm just gonna have that not be there at all. Something else I might wanna do though is have this secondary navigation menu at the very bottom of my site. So people can click on the pages there as well. I think that's kind of cool. So I'll just leave that there. So we'll go ahead and save that and publish it. Then we'll go back. And the next item on our list here is widgets. I actually think it's a little bit easier to control this widget stuff from this section of the dashboard. So I'm not gonna mess with this section right now. But right here where it says static front page, this is something I actually would recommend playing with a little bit. What this is saying right here is it's asking you what you want people to see when they first land on your website. By default, all WordPress websites are set up like blogs. So when people land on them, they'll see the latest post. And the purpose of this website we're not even really gonna have posts. We could add a blog to this if we wanted to, but that's not what I do with mine and that's not what I'm gonna show you here. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and click on a static page. And basically this is gonna say, whenever people land on this website, I want them to see whatever is on my homepage. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then as people show up, this is what they'll see. So go ahead and leave it like that. Then we're gonna go back again. Color scheme, again, if we wanted to change this around, we could. We could make it gold if we wanted to. I'm just gonna leave mine as green. And site layout, again, we can change that here as well or other places within the back end dashboard area. Breadcrumbs, I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Comments and trackbacks, I'm not gonna mess with that either. Content archives, I'm not gonna mess with this right now. And additional CSS. This is like if you really wanted to go nuts with customizing your website and like change the font and change all kinds of stuff about the look and feel of it. And if you happen to know CSS code, you could do that here. But I've not found that necessary on my site, so I'm not gonna mess with this either. Once we've made all those changes, we're gonna go ahead and click save and publish. And something else we'll want to play with a little bit is the widget area that I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and go there. So something we've already done is put this custom menu in the header right widget. And again, that's what you see right here. If you really wanna understand what happens when you put stuff in each one of these widget areas, I definitely recommend taking a look at the setup instructions within the Studio Press website, cause it'll explain pretty much everything if you're willing to take the time to go through that with a fine tooth comb. So it does take a while, but if you really wanna understand it, there's a lot of great information baked into this. So consider giving that a good read at some point. But again, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna go back here and there's just a few things that I'm going to add to kind of build out the website the way that I want it to look. So one of the things I think is really cool about this particular theme is this call to action right here and then this big, beautiful image in the background. So say if you've got like a basic greeting or a tagline or something that you want people to immediately see when they land on your website. To do that, you would go ahead and open up this thing that says home and featured. And as you can see, there's nothing in there right now. 
But if we go down here and grab this text widget and put that right there, all you'd have to do in the title is put whatever you want to show as these big bold letters. You can type that in right here. So you could say, welcome to our website. That's kind of lame, obviously, but whatever your website happens to do or whatever message you want to immediately convey, you can go ahead and put that right there. And then you can also put in here some kind of subtitle message. So we are so glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. You get the idea. Go ahead and save that. Now let's go ahead and preview what that looks like okay so that change alone made our website look a lot different because it opened up this image in the background and put this big bold message right there so it's pretty cool the next thing that i would change here is i'd go here to the primary sidebar and then we're going to take this text widget and add another one right here and what i'm going to use this for is just some quick testimonials so i'll just say testimonials and obviously get a few of those and add them in here Obviously, you'll want to put something better in there, but once it's in there, go ahead and just click Save. We'll take another look at what this looks like on the site now. Now, something you're going to notice when you get back to the main site is when you go ahead and click on, you know, any one of these other pages, you'll see the primary sidebar that we just created. And whatever content you put in here, it will just push it further and further down so that you'll have a larger sidebar. And then also the content of the page itself. So pretty much anywhere you go, the sidebar will always be there. However, on the home page, because we added this little widget area, it got rid of the content of the home page that would have been showing right here. So in order to make that page and the sidebar show up beneath this little image area, we have to do one little thing here. Okay, so with this theme, there are essentially two different ways you can display your home page. One way is to go back to the widgets section and take this widget that we already put in here and just remove it, just take it out altogether. Then when you refresh your page, it's gonna show like this. So all the content of your homepage is gonna be there. The sidebar content is gonna be there as well. And I haven't added any images to this yet, but if I wanted to, I could do that pretty easily just to spruce this up a little bit. For example, if I went here to edit page, I could add an image by clicking anywhere in the body of this text and then clicking on add media. And from this point, I can upload new images here or I can just click on whatever images I've already added and just take this and then change the size to a size that's gonna be appropriate to this and then say whether it's gonna be right, left, or center aligned. I'll go ahead and make this right aligned. Insert this into the page. We can go ahead and preview what this looks like and then that's what it's gonna look like. So it kind of just adds a little bit to the uh, home page, makes it look a little bit more interesting. However, another way we could do this if we wanted this image to be more prominent in the background like I was showing you earlier, we could just go ahead and delete this, just take it out altogether, and instead go back to this widget area and add this text widget back and have it say what it used to say. Put this in there. Go ahead and save it. And you'll notice if we go back here, because we added this widget area here, it automatically took out our sidebar and all of the body text of our homepage. So that's not cool. But one way we can fix that, and this will start to get a little technical, but if you follow along with exactly what I'm about to show you, we can go ahead and fix this. All we have to do is go back here to the dashboard. Let's go ahead and close this. And we're gonna go over here to appearance. Then we're gonna go down here to editor. And I will say this is an area of your website that you usually don't want to mess with. The only reason I'm coming here is because there is a very specific change to the code we can make, which is going to fix this home page issue. If we go ahead and click on frontpage.php and then go ahead and proceed with caution, and we're going to go down here to this section right here where we see these things. So it's approximately about 40 lines down in the code. And all we have to do once we get to this area is go right here where it says add filter and put two forward slashes. Then we're gonna go down here where it says remove action and do two more forward slashes before that. And then right here beneath that and add two more forward slashes right beneath that. And we go ahead and click update file. And as a result of making this little change to the code, we can go back here to the home page and refresh this. And now we see it has our image, it has our widget area, and it has the body of our page right here. And if we go ahead and click on the other pages, those are gonna look exactly as they did before. So if you do wanna have this big image area at the top and have the body of your home page and the sidebar show as well, that's all you have to do in the front-page.php section of your editor. So it's kinda messing with the theme a little bit, and that's usually not something I recommend. But if you're really careful and do those exact things I just showed, 
showed you, it should be fine. So once that's all set, we can move on to the next step. The last thing we got to do here is to get our submission form all set up, including any contact forms we want to include on the contact page. To do that, we go over here to forms. And again, we touched on this uh, earlier in the video. But basically what we have to do is we have to flesh out this form and put in all of the information we want to show up there. And in order to get started with that, we just have to understand how to choose the type of field that we want to add to the form and then put it in the form. So for example, usually the first thing I want to find out about anybody is their name. So I would take this, drag it over here to the right, and then it's going to show up just like that. And then the next thing I'd want to find out is when somebody's trying to submit property information to me is I want to know, okay, once I've got your name, are you actually the owner on title or are you submitting this on behalf of somebody else? So in that case, what we'd want to do is grab these radio buttons and put them right here. And radio buttons are just these things where there's these little circles where you can check yes or no. So if we ever want to edit what is showing up here, we can go ahead. I'm just going to get rid of this one because this is just a yes or no uh, answer. Yes in there and then no in there. And then we'll say, are you the owner on title? Just like that. And if we want to describe it even further, we could do that here, but it's pretty self-explanatory. And we can also say whether or not we want this to be a required field or not. So if it's a required field, the person can't even submit the form unless they've answered it. So I'm going to say for this one, yes, this is a required field. And for that matter, this first one as well is also going to be a required field. And then the next question after this, and then this is where Gravity Forms gets pretty cool, is you can create what's called conditional logic. So based on how a person answers this question will determine whether or not this question even shows up. So for example, if somebody says, no, I'm not the owner on title, we can say, please enter the name of the current owner. And what we can do at this point is scroll down here a little bit, click on advanced, and then say, enable conditional logic. And what we're saying here is, Show this field if all of the following match. And then we scroll down and click on this question. If somebody says no, then this question is going to show up. And if they say yes, then it's not going to show at all. So I'll show you how this works. If we click update, and then we go back here and we take a look at our current form, and this is everything we put in there so far. So if somebody says yes, then they can just go on to the next question. But if somebody says no, then this next question shows up. The nice thing about this is this submission form could be even longer, but if a question doesn't apply to a person, they're never even gonna see it. So a person doesn't have to be overwhelmed with like, oh my word, I have to answer a hundred questions when they may not have to. They may only have to answer 20 questions, but more questions will show up if we need that information. So that's a really nice thing about gravity forms that a lot of these form plugins don't have. As you'll see, if you play around with a lot of these different options, there's all kinds of different fields you can include in your form based on what questions you're asking and what kind of information you're looking to get. So for example, if you want like a drop down thing, you could do that. If you wanted numbers, check boxes, I mean, if you wanted to get email addresses, physical addresses, websites, phone numbers, all that stuff, there's pretty much every feasible thing you could think of. And to make this as easy for you as possible, what I'm going to do here is say if you don't want to take like several hours to figure out all the questions you should ask and how you should format them. It does take a little bit of work to get your form completely put together. If you don't want to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make available a special file that came directly from my buying website that you can import into your website if you have Gravity Forms. And it will basically show my exact form on your website, which took me a lot of time and effort to put together. And this will basically just give you like a full ready to work form, which you can either change at that point or you can just use it as it is. So if you want to do that, I'm going to have a link in this blog post and or beneath this video if you're watching this on YouTube where you can buy my complete form that's ready to go. You totally do not need this in order to complete your own form. You can absolutely do this yourself if you want to, but if you want a quick and easy fix, you can get a copy of my form as well. And if you happen to be a member of the RE Tipster Club, you're going to be able to download this form for free. Once you do download that file and you have it on your computer, all I got to do is go over here to import export, and then we're going to click on import forms, and we're going to get the file itself, which should look like like this, we're gonna put it right there and then import it. And there we go. Let's go ahead and edit the form. And then you can see all the information right here. It's all ready to go. I'm not gonna make any edits to this at all. I'm just gonna go back to my forms menu, make sure it's there. And it's this one right here that's just called form. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our sell your property page, click on edit. 
and we're going to just delete this and we're going to go back here to add a form and we're going to click on form and insert this. So now we've got this different form here. If we go ahead and update the page and then view the page itself, you can see the full form that's totally ready to go with all of the stuff that I've baked into it that really makes it work pretty well. So just keep this in mind as an option. I'm not saying my form is perfect, but I have worked on it a lot and I've been using it for years and it's worked pretty well for me. So. If you want to use my exact form and integrate it with your version of Gravity Forms, it is available to you if you want. But uh, anyway, once you've done all that and once you've gotten this framework in place, it's just a matter of changing the wording and the content, maybe adding pictures or video if you want to do that, and really just making the site your own. But this is how you set up just the bones and the infrastructure for a buying website. This is what I've been using for a while now and it's been working really well for me. So if that's what you want to do with your website, feel free. And again, you don't have to use this theme or do any of the stuff I'm talking about. There are a lot of other themes out there. And again, I will link to some of those themes along with some plugins that I've found helpful depending on what your website is doing and just uh, you know feel free to explore what's out there and uh, I wish you all the best with whichever theme you decide to use and however you decide to set your website up but either way hopefully this tutorial gave you some good insights and just a solid overview on how to get your website from nothing to something so thanks again for watching I appreciate you sticking with me I know this was a long video and I wish you all the best with your real estate website